Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Troop from Troop Talks here for another Jaguars preview game as we preview the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Houston Texans week number seven matchup a must win for the Jacksonville Jaguars so without further ado ladies and gentlemen let's dive right into the video I am Tree from BigJReport.com and this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Houston Texans week number seven preview Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen before I dive into this preview video a couple of Tree talks programming notes to inform you guys about like i've been alluding to all week i will not be able to go live for this game i will be on vacation i'm going to silverwood theme park which is right down the way from where i'm from and they have a thing called scary wood there's gonna be some haunted houses it's gonna be a good time also if you guys think that's something that you'd want to see like a vlog of of me and bailey going to scary wood uh leave that in the comments down below so i know that's something you guys would be interested in also uh i will not be able to drop a tree talks podcast on friday either i will be leaving uh i mean on saturday obviously i won't be able to do it on saturday because i will again be in scary wood and i'll be coming back on sunday when the game is going on so i'm gonna have to turn off my phone and make sure that i have no no idea what happens in the jags game so i could come home watch it from the recording and play it uh, and I would do a live reaction to that, but then I'd be I'd be too bad because I know there'd be some people in the chat telling me like the final score and stuff, and we're gonna avoid that. Anyway, we are still gonna be diving into things that the Jags need to do well in order to beat the Houston Texans, who are riding a wave right now, winning three straight games. Deshaun Watson is playing really really good football uh, right now. If this offensive line can keep the boy up. You know, the league is in trouble. This Houston Texans team is, again, no joke. Uh, I hate playing this team two times a year, and it's not the same reason I hate playing the Titans two times a year, where I just purely hate the Titans. Houston's a talented team, and they have a lot of depth uh, everywhere on the field. So, you know, that's something that I'm going to be looking at, and a lot of respect to the Houston Texans. Uh, you guys drafted Deshaun Watson, and actually, Deshaun Watson, I'd be lying to you, he was one of my favorite prospects the year he came out. He's a baller. He's a, he's a kid with a bright, bright future. Uh, in the NFL so you know again a lot of respect to te to the Texans and the Texans fans uh, of course Stephen Rowe the one that I do my weekly picks for uh, big Texans fan and like I said I ain't got nothing but respect for him but for the Jags man this is a must win the Jags t I mean the Texans took the Cowboys to the wire we got blown out by the Cowboys so hopefully that just absolutely means nothing like it usually does but let's go over the things the Jags need to do and need to do well in order to beat this on-the-rise Houston Texans uh, team. First and foremost, we need to establish a run game. We need to establish it early. We can't be going three and out the first three series and letting them score, you know, in the first three series. I want us to establish a run game. I want us to have long drives, you know, really like 10, 12 play drives to make sure we go down the field. And even if it's just a field goal, I'm okay with that. I think that's one thing that the Jags kind of have not been doing uh, as well this year as they did last year. Last year we had a lot of long sustained drives and this year we do not have a lot of long sustained drives. I can't even tell you how many times we went three and out uh, when we played Dallas last week. And uh, part of having a long drive is establishing a run game and getting everything uh, you know right on that side of the uh, ball. So I, I hear I hear rumors that Leonard Fournette might be playing this week but I wouldn't count on it. Uh, TJ Yeldon and Jamal Charles are going to be probably the bulk of the running game this week. Let TJ Yeldon just ball out. That guy deserves it. Like I said, he's just he's been dominating all season. He's had a great season. He has just, I think, 550 or something all-purpose yards this season, which is really, really good for a back that uh, not a lot of people thought could fill in uh, for a guy like Leonard Fournette, but he's gone out and he's done exactly that. So, TJ Yeldon, hopefully he gets involved, as well as Jamal Charles again. I'd like to see Jamal Charles get a little bit more involved this week um, to see, you know, exactly what he has in the tank still. And, you know, now you'd think that he'd learned the playbook a little bit more, and, you know, I think this week you should expect a little bit more of uh, Jamal Charles. And the next thing we're going to be discussing is just keep Blake Bortles upright. 
Like, this offensive line is the biggest problem. We're going up against J.J. Watt, who currently leads the league in sacks, and Jadavion Clowney. This is the pass rushing duo no one wants to face, especially when your tackles are uh, Josh Walker and Eric Flowers. And <laughs> that's just... That's how it is right now. So I think Eric Flowers probably will get the start this week. Not 100% sure on uh, what his status is. But we got to make sure that we contain those two just absolute beasts of human beings and make sure that Blake Bortles uh, is still standing upright and that he doesn't have to face, you know, a big hit from J.J. Watt or a big hit from Davion Clowney. Because, you know, if he does that, then it's Cody Kessler time. And Cody Kessler's going to go in there, steal the hearts of Jags fans, and become the next franchise quarterback. And just for Blake Bortles' sake, let's hope that just does not happen. You know, you'd like to see the guy succeed. Cody Kessler, man, that, that's why he's on the benches. Because if we just had Cody Kessler in there, we'd already be Super Bowl bound. And, you know, we want we want to give a... You, need, you know, the teams need some competition. That's why we still have Blake Bortles in there. That's why we're, we're holding Cody Kessler back because that's that's the key to the Super Bowl. And, you know, J.J. Watt and Jadavion Clowney get after Blake Bortles. He's going to be hurt, and then the Super Bowl run will actually uh, start going on, and everybody will be on the Cody Kessler hype train. That's kind of what I, uh, <laughs> I have taken from if Blake Bortles gets hurt. But, no, in all seriousness, Blake Bortles needs to stay upright uh, in order for this team to be successful this week and in order for the Jags to beat the Houston Texans. Like I said, Jadavion Clowney and J.J. Watt really need to contain those two guys. Those guys are two of the best at their position. Now, for the wide receivers, just be reliable. Like, like that's it. Just be reliable. Like, if it's third and three and Blake needs to throw you a quick ball, don't drop it. Like, if, if we're going to test you, like, down the field, get, like, a 20-yard go route, fade route, whatever you want to call it, and, you know, it's in your reach and it's in your grasp, catch it. Like, I mean, just just do the simple things right, wide receivers. That's all I'm saying. That's all you really need to do. Uh, this Houston secondary isn't too impressive. Uh, not to say that our wide receivers are too impressive either. But, you know, let's see these wide receivers do something. Uh, D.D. Westbrook continues to emerge as the Jags' current uh, number one wide receiver, which I love to see. And he continues to make plays, and I think he'll always be reliable. But, you know, the other guys, Keelan Cole, Dante Moncrief, let's see what they got as far as uh, reliability is concerned to catch the football and make sure that, you know, we can get, we can keep drives going uh, on third down. That's a big thing this week is we need to keep drives going. Uh, we can't just get off the field every single third down. We need to make sure that we stay on the field and, you know, like I said, long sustained drives for the offense. So those are the keys for the offense as far as the defense goes. The defensive line needs to get after Deshaun Watson. I believe I've seen a stat today that uh, Deshaun Watson has been hit 70 times this season, and it's already in week seven. I mean, week, yeah, week seven now, and that's 70 hits, man. That's, that's 10 a week if my math is correct. But, you know, Deshaun Watson, too, he got abused in that Dallas game on Sunday night. I remember watching that, and that was just... That was ugly to see, but this defensive line, they're going up against an offensive line, kind of like ours. It's kind of banged up. It's not that great, uh, and we have two great defensive ends as well as Yannick Ngakwe, Clayus Campbell. We also have two good guys inside, so we need this defensive line to go out there and get after Deshaun Watson in order to win. We can't let him complete, you know, any big passes. We need to be able to get in there, sack the quarterback, you know, have another one, you know, have us, have us be called Saxonville again, like get six sacks, five sacks. You know, this is a big thing. We just need to get after Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson is the main guy I'm worried about in this game. I think DeAndre Hopkins is going to be, uh, he's going to be blanketed by Jalen and AJ if Todd Wash doesn't run any more stupid fucking zone defenses. I think DeAndre Hopkins is going to be blanketed by uh, Jalen Ramsey or AJ Boye uh, all game long. So, you know, we really got to be aware of Deshaun Watson's uh, pocket presence. You know, he He's going to be able to complete some passes. He's also going to be able to make plays happen with his feet. And he's also going to make plays uh, just scrambling out of the pocket to buy more time. And then, you know, the receivers are going to get open that way. So we really need to get some sacks. And we really, really need to get after uh, Deshaun Watson. And then make sure that you don't focus on the pass game so much that you forget the run game. So this is what I'm saying is that we can't focus on Deshaun Watson. Because I'm pretty sure that is the main premise of this defensive scheme this week is to be able to focus on Deshaun Watson, make sure that he doesn't make big plays with his feet, make sure he doesn't make big plays scrambling, you know, everything like that, you know, they're really focused in on Deshaun Watson, I think, this week, and that, with that being said, you know, you can't let 
the run game get out of hand. You know, you can't just hand the ball off, hand the ball off, and get fucking eight yards because we're too focused on uh, what Deshaun Watson brings and then, you know, have them have a really big day on the ground. Uh, we need to be able to stop the run game as well. You know, not always be in a pass rush set, you know, if you're the defensive line and, you know, if you're a linebacker, don't always take your drops, you know, things like that. We just can't, we can't, we can't uh, let the run game tear us up. You know, we can't focus on one thing uh, so much that it ends up hurting us in the long run. So, And then the big thing for the defense, the big thing for the offense, sustain drives and get points. End it with a kick. End it with either a field goal or a point after. For the defense, let's cause some fucking turnovers. That's the big thing. The Jags have lacked all season long. We have not caused a lot of turnovers in this this game. Right here in a must-win situation in order to keep a division lead and hopefully Tennessee loses to get a division lead. We need to cause turnovers. We need to make Deshaun Watson panic with the pass rush, and we need to be able to get some interceptions, get some sack fumbles. Yannick and Gawkway, let's get a strip sack. You know, let's see what we can do you know if everything needs to just align on defense we need to cause turnovers and we need to be able to get this interception you know fumble recovery for a touchdown you know everything like that and then when we get interceptions or we get fumble recoveries make sure that when you go on the field as an offense you sustain a drive and you get some points the big thing this week cause turnovers sustain drives two things the Jags have yet to prove they could do this season but it is a big big must for the Jags this week against Houston Texans and that was my Jacksonville Jaguars versus Houston Texans week number seven preview what you guys think leave your comments down below don't forget to check the links down below as well don't forget to like me on Facebook at Trib Talks follow me on Twitter at Trevor Pixley and follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley also if you're feeling very generous don't forget to donate on Patreon that's patreon.com forward slash Treeb Talks to become part of the Treeb Stribe today. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new Jaguar content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Done straight back. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.